from Cole Fieldhouse in College Park, Maryland. It's an ACC showdown between the Blue Devils of Duke and the Maryland Terrapins. The veterans on these two clubs understand the wars of late February, how each battle can determine who goes and who stays, and just how much is at stake tonight. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Dan Bonner. It's great to have you with us. At this time of the year, our focus shifts from the conferences to the NCAA, and certainly a lot of implications in this one, Dan. Mike, there sure are. For the Duke Blue Devils, they've got 17 wins overall, two games left. I think if they win one of the two, they're in the NSA tournament, but that second game is North Carolina at Duke, and I don't think they want their season riding on the North Carolina game. Maryland is 14 and 10, but they, at least they have their last three games at home. Mike, I think 14 wins isn't enough. They've got three games left at home. I think if they run the table, they guarantee themselves a spot in the NCAA tournament. If not, it's up in the air. They need this one. Well, we're ready to go from College Park, a sellout crowd, and two teams who have been to war before. We'll be back to Cole Fieldhouse in a moment. There were 22 lead changes the first time they met. And UMass right now leads by one over St. Joe's. A bump and grind second half. Meanwhile, Connecticut pulling away, leading by 10. We'll keep you posted on these scores, but now to Maryland. Mike. All right, Chris, thanks very much. Welcome back to Cole Fieldhouse in College Park. We're ready for Duke and Maryland. Let's look at the lineup. For Duke under Mike Krzyzewski, Ricky Price finally fulfilling that great potential in his last eight games. He's averaging 17 and a half a contest. For Gary Williams and the Terrapins, Johnny Rose on the verge of another record, needing just four more steals to be number one all time in ACC thefts. Akizi and Newton to jump center. Maryland controls the opening tip. Mike, I think one of the keys to this game is going to be which team can get easier baskets. Both teams like to run up and down. Maryland likes to pressure. Duke's going to have to take care of the ball. Rhodes in the lane gets the first two. And here comes the pressure against Collins, who has developed into quite a point guard. Price, two on one and in. Collins for three. Gonzowski tried to keep it alive of Keezy with a rebound for the Turk. If you can beat the pressure, Mike, you're going to get some open shots, but you've got to make the shot. Wide open, Rose, two for two. Johnny Rhodes is one of the best inside players from the guard slot that you'll find, not only in this league, but across the country. Price outside with Rhodes on it. Man-to-man -man defense by the Terrapins. Hip is on Capel as the shot clock goes to 10. Collins couldn't get three in the corner. Off his knee out of bounds. Johnny Rhodes noted for his defense, one of the top steal leaders in history, but he does a great job moving without the ball. Usually another guard matches up against him. Guards aren't used to playing post defense. You better be able to guard Rhodes in the post. Simpson's working outside the zone to boost, gets it back to hip. Maryland not really a great three-point shooting team, Mike, so the zone is a pretty good change up on the defense again. Johnny Rhodes having a perfect night. That's his first three. He's hit all three shots from the floor, and the Turks lead it 7 nothing. Johnny Rhodes, the Maryland leader in three-point baskets in their history. He certainly looks like he's pumped up to play in this game. This is his last time around. I think he knows how important this game is. He can't, takes you inside, and then you just can't forget about him outside. What a great job by Simpkins to draw the defense. You better not leave Rhodes that alone. Really, he's done it by volume. He's a 32% long-range shooter. So you got to jack a lot of them up there to be number one all time. Akizi with another rebound. Duke can't buy one early. Duke's not being very patient on the offensive line. Akizi, double-team down low, gets the roll. 
Alex Krzyzewski wants a 20-second timeout. He may need more than a 20 after a 9-0 run. Well, what he needs is not necessarily a 20-second timeout. He needs some points. And Duke on the offensive end, Mike, one pass and a shot. And I don't think that's the way you want to play against the Maryland team that gets up and down so effectively. Here we see Johnny Rhodes. A nice pass by, uh, by Simpkins to Rhodes. The defense, of course, has to go to Rhodes. And Rhodes, I mean, he's shown us all facets of his games. He scored inside, he scored outside. Now the nice assist to Akizu. It's been up and down for most teams in this league this year. Reference this against Clemson, 20% in the first half tonight, 4 for 4. Mike, you can't pay any attention to what a team did in their previous game on Saturday. I had a Wake Forest game, and they scored 49 points in the entire game against Virginia. And then last night, I had Wake Forest against North Carolina. They scored 52 points in the first half. Inbounds, Domzowski comes back to help out with Collins. This has to be a very difficult year for coaches. It's a new adventure every night. You have no idea what to expect. Right. Nice cut to get away from X-Ray Hip and gets the first bucket of the game. Ricky Price actively looking for his shot in the second half of the season. Hip has been playing much better for Merrill. He's back to the man-to-man. -man. This is a tough matchup for the Dolce. Booth leans in around him. Deuce's Booth has been playing his entire career against bigger guys inside, and Domzolski, just a freshman, is going to have a tough time. Domzolski back to Newton, and Newton is hacked by Booth. Maryland has made every field goal attempt so far tonight. First meeting between these teams, Duke won by 10 at home as Newton had a double-double, and look at the Duke free throw. 32 of 47. Tough to lose when you get 47 free throws. Duke attack, that free throw graphic is what Duke did for years and years, shooting more free throws than their opponents attempted. Maryland played very poorly in the first half of that game. They got off to a very slow start. They're not off to a slow start tonight. Mike Krzyzewski has seen Greg Newton work and work and work and become a quality center in the ACC. Missed another free throw, however. Here comes Simpkins on the run, quickly to hit. Maryland playing with a lot of confidence. Make all your shots to help the confidence. This one's off of Newton out of bounds. And the tempo has certainly favored the Terps so far. Maryland can get it into a quick tempo. They can really use their athleticism. They've got guys like Lincoln who can really get to the basket. And Akizu has done such a nice job as the season has gone on. That's three rebounds now in the game for Akizu. Has been a real presence inside. One of those guys who's hit a couple of different plateaus as Rhodes misses. Of course, Akizu doesn't have much experience in the basketball. Two years before he came to College Park. And one of the things that Duke does very well, get the ball down low in the blocks to Newton. Newton ran the court very well. The Maryland, Maryland can't set their pressure if they don't score. Nice job in transition. Here's a easy low against Domzowski again. An X3 hip will fire from long range. Domzowski with a rebound. Dan, the Newton Domzowski tandem has been very effective for Duke. Domzowski's really done a nice job having to step in after Carmen Wallace was hurt and Tony Moore was suspended. Newton with the baseline miss, but gets the ball back on the follow. Newton has four, and Duke has scored the last six. Mike, and I think what has to concern Gary Williams is the ease with which Duke can enter the ball on the inside. And this is going to sound like a ridiculous thing to say, but Maryland plays much better when they're scoring. Because when they score, they can set, set the, the defense pressure. and set the pressure. Newton not drifting away. Let me correct you. I didn't think it sounded ridiculous at all. <laughs> no, no. You can't score. It's hard to win. Capel. Michigan State found that out last night. <laughs> Capel with a three. Well, this is what this league has been all about this year. Maryland jumped out 9 to nothing. Now Duke on a 7-0 run. It's been the way the teams have played in games and within the conference in streaks. It's been amazing to watch. Duke in the zone. This is Simpkins. Shot clock 11. Now Simpkins is going to have to create something. Gives it off the road with 6. Nice well, pass. Comes to Akizi, and Akizi, with two seconds on the shot clock, will get the foul. 
I think that's one of those fouls where Domzalski was actually trying to get out of the way, and Akizi bounced off it. First on Domzalski, 14.53 to go first half. Could UMass lose back-to-back -back home games? St. Joe's exploiting a Minutemen weakness. You can drive on them from the perimeter. Dimitri Damani gets the pass, gets the hoop, gets the foul, and get a load of this. A five-point St. Joe's lead with about six to play on their home floor. Louisville down five, five and a half to play. A big night. We'll keep you posted, Mike. All right, Chris, Kentucky better watch out. That's the way things have gone this year. But uh, they may be too good to have to worry about it. Maryland leading by two, and of course, both of these teams are on the bubble. Maryland really on the bubble, Dan. Maryland has 14 wins, Mike, and I think that even though as we look here, they've got some good wins. They've beaten North Carolina, they've beaten Georgia Tech, that George Washington win looking better and better. Maryland's played a very difficult schedule. You can see the kind of teams that, that they've lost those games to non-conference teams. At 14 and 10, let's say, for example, they win two of their last three, finish 16 and 11, and then lose in the first round of the ACC tournament. I don't think 16 and 12 is good enough to get them there. Even though one of the computer indexes says it's the fourth toughest schedule in the country and rates them 26 out of all the teams. Proof with a miss, tried his own follow. Domzowski finally jerks it down. One of those computers are just aids, and I think the men and women who make the decisions, they're going to look more at that 16 and 12. There's a lot of teams out there who won, who have good wins and, and good losses, if you will. It's going to be real difficult for the committee. And as we found out, it could mean win the chess game. <laughs> But I think if Maryland, if they win their last three and they finish 9 and 7 in the ACC and their Bruce gets a foul going to the basket, you're not going to be able to deny them a bit. Even if they go and they lose in the first round of the ACC tournament, they're going to have to be in. So and I think that's the thing that Maryland's got to look at. Yeah, they might get in at 16 and 12, but if they win their last three games, I think they eliminate all the questions. This is this time last year, Gary Williams was not around with his ball club. He was hospitalized with pneumonia. And it, it must be something that goes around in Maryland. Their radio play-by-play -play guy, Johnny Holliday, is not here tonight. He's down with bronchial pneumonia, and we certainly wish him well. If he's watching. Our best goes out to John. Oh, you know John's watching. Streak so far tonight. Maryland started off hitting everything at a 9-0 lead, but in the last 223, Duke has outscored them 9-2 until this free throw situation. Turps up by three at 12-9. Close hits one. Maryland is a very effective team going to the basket. If they attack the basket, they're very, very effective. Duke in that zone defense that they've shown a couple times, trying to keep them out on the perimeter where they're not quite as effective. Capel has had some shooting troubles lately. Look pretty good on that one. It's a three. And the lead is cut to one. Part of the group's success recently has been their ability to pick the shot. Rhodes with a nice catch, but then Domzowski got a piece of the ball on the way up. Wojciechowski in as the point guard. He and Collins will work in the backcourt with Capel. So it's a three-guard set. Capel nearly lost it. Wojo for three. Brunson offensive rebound. And throws it past the slipping column. We talked about Maryland being on the bubble. Duke in the same situation. Although you would think, Dan, at 17 and 10, they've got to be in pretty good shape because they played the toughest schedule in the country. I think so. The thing with the about Duke, they're, they're 17 and 10 where Maryland is 14 and 10. And the reason for that is the great Alaska shootout. Duke went out there. They beat Indiana. They beat Iowa. They won that. They've got the 17 wins. The only thing that they need to be concerned about is road scores again inside. They don't want to be stumbling at tournament selection time. They need to win one of their last two games, and I think they guarantee themselves a spot. Johnny Rhodes, who averages 17 points a game, already has nine. He's a tough matchup for this Duke squad. And matchups have become so critical this year, especially in this conference, when people are not overloaded with talent. Capel, good head fake, and hits another one. Two for two from long range for Capel. We're tied at 15. He's hit all three long range shots tonight. Collins with back to back 27 point games. A lot of those coming from three point range. Now Capel's lighting it up from three. That's quite a weapon. You can score from the perimeter. You've got to go out and guard him. That loosens it up inside. 
They're going to call a block on Newton as Simpkins crashes into him. Check some of the scores coming your way tonight. Georgia Tech in Tallahassee leading by 13 with five minutes down in the second half. Clemson against North Carolina State. You know if NC State's playing, it's going to come down to the last 30 seconds and probably the last shot. And Illinois and Indiana locked up in a close one as Lou Henson trying to go out and spot. This one bounces off the knee of LaRon Profit, another freshman who's getting a lot of time for Maryland and playing well. Capel who's on fire from back the other way. Domzowski trying to keep it alive, and Lucas with the rebound. Mike, he's on fire with spot-up jump shots. He's not on fire with those wild runners to come away. Lucas with Lane, hits the three. Mario Lucas has hit 26, now 27 three-point shots this year. He comes off that bench, cocked and loaded, doesn't he? <laughs> he does that. Never met a bad <laughs> shot. <laughs> Capel got around Rose. He may have switched an ankle on that play. Offensive rebound, Newton is fouled from behind by Loka. Newton playing really well inside tonight. Mike has Capel. He made the good fake and got around, but then he fumbled the ball, and rather than collect himself, he shot it right away, and so he missed it. But Newton has done a nice job down on the inside. He's missed a couple of close shots. He's got four points in the game. Two offensive rebounds. Unfortunately, this is not the best part of his game right here from the free throw. Not at 60.9%. And you know when I finish the statement that it's a compliment. He is a Dan Bonner type of player. He's somebody that was not blessed with a lot of God-given talent, but he gets a lot out of everything he had. <laughs> You I'll insulted that the later young man. so you know it's a compliment. 11.31 <laughs> to go in a half back in a moment. St. Joe's trying to hang on at UMass. We're going to have a little Bay watch here. Rashid Bay gets the ball. Again, the penetration against UMass. They've been doing it all night long. A four-point UMass deficit, 2.50 to play. I can. All right, Chris, watch out for those UMass guards. Those guys love to take the big shots down the stretch. Maryland here by one. Mike Krzyzewski, in case you had heard the rumors that he might replace Lou Henson at Illinois, Mike Krzyzewski said Chicago native or not, he is very happy where he is and has no intention of taking the job that Lou Henson is retiring from, and I'm very happy about that. Well, personally. I think that that's wishful thinking on the part of some folks out in Illinois. I think that if I had somebody I wanted to hire as a basketball coach, I'd say, well, you know, we're going to go out and get Mike Krzyzewski. That doesn't mean we're going to get him, though. No, the Celtics know that. <laughs> Turf by one, 11-27 and counting first half. Mike Patrick, Dan Bonner with you. Glad you could join us in Paul Fieldhouse. Good-looking freshman of the game. Terrell Stokes, number 12 from Maryland. He'll play the point. Lucas forces one up. Wojciechowski, the smallest guy on the court, has the rebound. While we're talking about Mike Krzyzewski, Mike, I think that he has done an outstanding job with this particular yes. basketball team. They were losing a lot of close games early, but they never got down on themselves, and they continued to, to my mind, to have fun out there, and they finally got it turned around. Said something very interesting early in the season. We have to identify who we are, and I think they did that, and they have lived with it and grown because of it. Shot clock at seven. Price blocked from behind. Great play by LaRon Profit. The 6'8 freshman from Charleston, South Carolina. Ricky Price very quick to the basket. This is something that doesn't happen to him very often. Profit gets his hand right on top of the ball, and that forces the held ball situation, alternating possession, it goes to Duke. And again, that's why that roll is so silly. Making great defensive play when he gets anything. Price with a miss. Newton keeps it alive. Domzowski kept it alive. Now Newton was over the back of Profit. The Maryland fans wanted to foul. They're not going to get it. Well, Jahowski with a steal from behind. His teammates have to help him on that one. Well, Jahowski scored his career high, 13 in the first game against Maryland. Well, Jahowski, well, of course, is from Maryland. Playing a little triangle and two defense right now, guarding Capel and Collins and zoning everybody else, and Duke has struggled with it. 
Coming your way tomorrow night on ESPN, West Virginia and Pittsburgh, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific start, followed by number 14, Memphis, and number 7, Cincinnati. That's a 9.30 start all tomorrow on ESPN as we wind down toward the tournament. Last foul was on Taman Domzowski. It's his second, and he's used to picking up a lot of personal fouls out of eight games this year. Oh, yeah, Tough lob pass, can't be handled inside. Ball goes out of bounds. Whose ball? The officials will confer. And it goes to Duke. Rhodes really wants the ball inside. You can see there's no help behind him for Duke to pass. Just not very well thrown. Maryland, however, is going to keep this ball. It went off Domzalski. But that was just a bad pass inside the Rhodes. He was open, a good pass, and he's got a basket. Another conference, and Maryland gets the ball back. Help, 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 help. Lucas wheels on Newton. Didn't get the roll. Brunson with another rebound. That was an outstanding drop step by Newton. Newton sets a great screen and allows Price to get to the basket. Wow. Duke's first lead of the ball game with 9.24 to go first half. Look at the score baskets to help your team. Newton just picked off Rodney Elliott. And Price was able to get to the goal. There's a lot of those little things. Stokes has been superb in his goal of the ball. He's rose out of the corner. Lucas, offensive rebound, took his time to hip and hip walk. Duke likes to get it out in transition, and Ricky Price is a great guy in transition, but coming just into the left of your screen, you can see Elliott bouncing out of the play, and it's because Newton. Now watch Newton coming down, sets the screen. He prevents Elliott. That's like a block in football. He just prevented Elliott from getting to the play. Collins wheeling into the lane. Steele ahead to Stokes. Stokes behind the back row. I don't know that they were the passes that Gary Williams would have wanted thrown, but the guys caught him and laid him in. I don't think Stokes had much of a choice. He was in pretty bad position there when he finally got control over it. Collins leans into one of his favorite shots, can't hit it. It's out of bounds out to Maryland. Sometimes it looks great, and sometimes it doesn't look great, but Gary Williams is just happy when it works. Rhodes has to come up, goes behind his head to catch the ball, and then drops it off to Mario Lucas. I was wrong. I gave Stokes too much credit. <laughs> that wasn't much of a pass. Here's Capo. He's followed by Hip, who gave him a forearm. Georgia and Florida tied 1445 to go in the ballgame. South Carolina with a win at home against Tennessee. It's very surprising the South Carolina team. There's somebody that's put themselves in a position that he's going to have to make a decision. Pretty good coaching job there, hasn't he? Uh, you knew when Eddie Fogler went there, yep. eventually he was going to get it done. I think they've gotten it done just, done just a little earlier than even he thought they were. Down by a point, 8.06 to go, first half. Cable launches the three. <laughs> launches is the right word. Newton with a follow. Cable with a rebound. Tried to get it to Newton, and he's fouled. Booth picks up the foul. Gary Williams is going crazy on the Maryland bench. Well, what's new about that? <laughs> well, nothing. Business as usual. 20 to 19, Terps by one, 7.55 to go in the half. Need we say more? <laughs> I think we said enough. It's gonna be fun. This is one of the great times of the year. If you join us late in this one, here's what's been happening in this contest with Maryland leading by one, 7.55 to go in the first half. Terps got off to a great start, but then Duke has caught them. Three-point shooting, the Blue Devils have hit three of eight. Points off of turnovers heavily in Maryland's favor. And second chance points also heavily in Maryland's favor. Mike Duke with seven offensive points. Newton Domzowski are really the one hard in as has Brunson. Boy, Keezy and Newton are banging on him. 
tough follow up uh -oh. jump shot couldn't get the roll. Then he kept it alive. Brunson, That's going to be on Brunson. Brunson's going to get called for being over the back. Newton is a very confident player down on the inside. He may not be real fluid in terms of athletic skill, and he may not be the strongest guy, but he knows how to get position. That's an excellent pass. The only mistake he makes here is he fades away a little bit. I think sometimes if he jumps into that shot, takes him to the basket, then he may get fouled. That's what I said earlier. The environment. <laughs> If you're going to continue to insult the man, we're going to start getting letters from his parents. Capel couldn't save it. My and best scoring skills, is certainly leveled off in this one. My best skills were turnovers, personal fouls, and had shots blocked. Well, I always tell everybody Ralph Sampson broke every one of your records. <laughs> Did it the first day he showed up. Stokes stays in at the point. This is Yessa Cavish. Pretty good shooter from outside to hip. Booth. Nice move down the lane to, to hip or to a Keezy, but a foul before the shot. Mike Krzyzewski thinking that that foul should have been called a non-shooting foul. Hit. Booth is one of those guys. He plays a power forward spot, but he's got the skills of a point guard, and he's hard to defend out on the perimeter when he's going to put it on the deck and take it to the basket. Easy, the freshman from Nigeria. He was a question mark when he was signed by Gary Williams and the Terps because of his lack of basketball background. But certainly he was a fine athlete, an excellent soccer player in his native land. So he's got the quick feet and can run. And we keep hearing about all these guys, particularly come from Nigeria, who play soccer. He must have some tall soccer players yeah. over there. And big. Wasn't the new goal supposed to be a soccer yes. player? You gotta be kidding me. He was the goal coach. Capel working hard against Hip. That's a tough matchup for him. Especially on the outside. He tries to shoot up with the 6 8 hip and greens, and apparently not too tough. <laughs> that was a great job to get his feet set and get the shot off quickly. Hip at with his size usually doesn't bother perimeter shooting. Capel has 11. Yesa Kavishis, contact with the Wojciechowski, and the foul will go against Yesa Kavishis. Wojciechowski comes over here to double team, and he's just going to slip down to the baseline, get himself an excellent position. Yesa Kavishis never saw him. Tied at 21. Duke trying to take the lead again. Here's some pressure against Collins, and here comes the trap. Collins dribbles right through it. Advantage Blue Devils. And Collins makes him pay with a 14-foot leaner in the lane. A lot of guys. Points. A lot of guys. I think Capel is one of them. They go in the lane and they shoot that 14-foot leaner, and it's a bad shot. But Collins, he actually hits that thing most of the time. He loves it. He's also one of the best end-to-end -end players in the country. Yes, the Cavs is for three. Brunson with another rebound. Stan Brunson has given us quality minutes underneath four boards tonight. And I think that's extremely important for Duke. They don't have much of a bench, and so they got to get contributions from everybody coming off the bench. Collins, that's it. Oh, come on. Anyway. Holy cow, what an effort by Collins. Jerry Williams wants a 20-second timeout. Collins has, is a very effective offensive player. He's, he's not the quickest guy in the world, but he's got great skills. That's a great decision to bust through that double team. And then nobody stops him, and so he just leans in and hits the basket. Now, that was a leaner without any pressure on him. This time, Yasa Kavish just does a pretty good job getting himself in position, getting his hands up in the air, actually bodies Collins a little bit. The ball still goes in the basket. Duke on a 6-0 run, and Collins in his last four games, if you look at 1-3 and 4, he's at 23, 27, and 27. Against North Carolina State, he did not hit a three, but he used to have games like that all the time. Last year, he sh he was awful from three-point range, and the young man doesn't let it get him down anymore. He has developed into a terrific ball player. Mike, in that Virginia game, the first one that we had there on the graphic, that was one where Duke trailed very big, and they came back and won the game. Nice chance by Stokes to boom. Forced it up, didn't get it. Bodies everywhere, jump ball. And the possession arrow will give it back to the Turks. Booth just not quite tall enough or strong enough to force that ball. 
into the basket. That young man's had a wonderful year. Yes, he has. Averaging nearly eight boards a game. Pretty, pretty good for a guy who's 6'5", has always played with these bigger people. He came in as probably the most highly recruited player in the Maryland class that included that call. Was his name Smith? Yeah. Far more highly regarded than Joe Smith coming in. And never minded taking the back seat either. And that's going to be a travel. That's a good attacking move by Booth, though. He knows he's got Domzalski on him. Quicker than Domzalski, just shuffled his feet as he started that spin move. Turnover story, 10 combined first half, 4.56 to go. And Maryland needs to force more turnovers. Domzalski wants some help, gets across the timeline. If I was Domzalski, I'd want help, too, if I'm holding the ball. <laughs> Not where he wants to be. Foul. Both teams really stepping up the defense. Capel picks up his second. One of the problems that Jeff Capel has had at points during his career is sometimes he doesn't make very good decisions. When he draws a Keezy, he's got to stop and pass the ball to Newton for the dunk rather than take it all the way to the basket and make and create the charge. It was just a poor decision. Rhodes with a miss. Oh, Prophet's going to pick up the foul, but he very nearly picked Newton's pocket. Newton got poked in the eye. That's a pretty good way to steal the ball if you can get away with it. Poke the guy in the eye, and then he loses control of the ball. Works for me. <laughs> Gary Williams obviously didn't see that part of it and wasn't happy with it. Well, and Newton didn't see it either. Uh, <laughs> Rhodes, after starting out very quickly from the field, misses the, the shot. Newton comes down with the Whoa. rebound and profit. That's the WWF. The, the, he rakes his face. Newton comes down with the ball. He's going to try to turn, and here comes the hand right across the face. All right, let's check in with Chris Fowler while we have a moment. Chris. Guys, we take you to the Mullen Center where St. Joe's and Coach Martelli trying to hang on. 19 seconds to go. UMass down two with the ball. Let's join Bruce Beck and Ed Stefanski. UMass will try again, trailing by two, 18.6 seconds left. St. Joe's one timeout left, UMass none. Padilla, guarded by Ben. Padilla, fired. It won't go. Camby keeps it alive. Right with the follow. No good. Six seconds to play. Right fire. Good. High game. 3.6 seconds left. St. Joe's has a timeout if they want to use it. Bass gets it. Good if it goes. And we will go to overtime. Unbelievable action. Wow, Bedlam at Amherst, UMass forcing overtime. They have won 10 consecutive OT games. We'll keep you on track of that game. Now back to Maryland, guys. 3.52 to go in the half, 28-21. Blue Devils by seven after that great Maryland start. Duke on the road has fought its way right back in this game. Might take the lead. Duke has created a situation where even though the teams are scoring, there's a lot of scoring in this game, it's more a half-court game. Maryland has not been able to get out to run. They haven't been able to create many steals. We'll be back to Cole Fieldhouse. The Blue Devils of Duke with a seven-point lead, and part of it is effective half-court offense. Jeff Capel at the top of your screen is going to run x ray hip off a screen by Newton. Now watch Capel's feet as he catches the ball. He steps back while he's squaring his body to the basket. That creates enough space where he can shoot it over top of the taller hip. Duke, 11 of 27. Capel, when he has gotten himself set before he shot the ball, has been very effective. He's gotten a little trouble with some wild runners in the lane. The numbers on Jeff Capel tonight as he sits alongside Mike Krzyzewski. With 341 to go on the half, full court pressure. Price, dangerous cross court pass. Roll jump, picks it up to Newton to Brunson. Brunson waited too long, got triple team and Rhodes blocking. Now steal back the other one. Crowd wanted a walk on Newton, and now they're going to call a foul against Maryland. 
guy who got his hands on that loose ball more than anybody else was Wojciechowski. We've been talking about yep. how Wojciechowski's been all around the loose balls. He is the one who eventually came out of there. Maryland, their game is to force turnovers, Mike, but they've turned it over seven times in the last six minutes. And a couple of the turnovers have been like this. Guys just losing their balance with the ball. Wojo tries to pick it up, and then Newton gets it to him. Wojciechowski gets fouled. Now, we were told at the beginning of the year, if you go down on the floor after a basketball and attempt to roll over, it's travel. Yes, that's correct. Well, he did more than attempt to roll over. Let's see, he rolled over, so he just didn't attempt to. You're going to get technical on me now, Mike. All right. Here comes Simpkins. Four on two to row. Price may have gotten a hand on that, and players scrambling everywhere. Mike, that's been the story of the first half for Maryland. There have been a couple of times where they haven't converted easy opportunities. But Gary Williams is not pleased with the result, but he's pleased at least that his team is out in transition. That's what they need to do. Rhodes just lost the ball going up. Simpkins goes for a steal. He cracks into Brooks, and they'll go Brunson for the travel. Simpkins may have gotten away with one there. Well, you wanted the guy called for a travel when he fell down. That's right. Now you knock him down, they call him. <laughs> okay, all right. Even up. <laughs> Mike Krzyzewski is not very happy with that. No, result. he's not. But, of course, he doesn't have the most objective point of view out there. Oh! Baseline, profit, no basket. Offensive foul. He's tall. We can't get anybody to make a basket here because there's fouls, traveling, losing a ball out of bounds. Right there, he's open, Mike. Right there, he's open. If he stops and shoots the jump shot, he probably scores two points. But the there's another steal by Rose. Rose gets it back outside. Now they dump it back inside, and Rose is not going to make any, take any chances with that when he slams it. Maryland has the ability to put a lot of pressure on, and they're doing it right now. Rose got a hand on that one, too. The point that I was making about Crawford, Mike, the mid-range jump shot no longer exists for those kids, and that's where Crawford got a foul. Quickly back the other way. Simpkins for that three. Mike, there's a foul called against Crawford, but what we've seen in the last three or four possessions what was a comfortable half-court game for Duke has now become an up-and-down kind of transition game. And even though Maryland committed the foul on that play, there, this is the way they'd like to play this game. This has been a mad scramble. Simpkins just pulls up from three-point range and drains it. And again, that's in transition. That's the way Maryland wants to play. They'd like to get the ball up and down. They're finally able to score a couple of baskets so they can set their pressure. this year and this is the first he's played a lot of minutes in this first half yes he has Mike Krzyzewski has enjoyed using a three guard combination when he can Duke with a real small lineup on the court right now Stoke kicks it back to Lucas get that shooter's mentality just inside the three point line Pressure, good catch by Price. And Duke, you see, they're slowing it up a little bit, Mike. They'd like to get some easy opportunities, but they've got to be careful. They don't want to get in just an up and down kind of game. Keep you up to date on some scores outside of the ACC. Halfway through overtime, St. Joe's and UMass still tied. Maryland's on a 7-1 run here. Louisville trailing in overtime against a good Marquette club. That's another one of those teams. They win that game. This committee has another decision to make. That's why this is important for Maryland. There's other teams that are that are in the same kind of a situation as they are. It's not like you have to get to a certain number and you're in. There, everybody else is in the mix. Oh boy, Rhodes and Simpkins both switched out, and Capel was open, and he didn't get the ball. Now Simpkins going to pick up the five. Bryce lost it on the way up. I think they're going to give it to Stokes. Duke screening down underneath. And watch, Capel down on the bottom left sets the screen. Both the guys go with him. Capel wide open under the basket, but Wojciechowski doesn't see him. 
Mike Krzyzewski and Gary Williams out at the scorer's table. Uh, Gary, Gary Williams is asking the fans not to throw things on the court. Of course, what they threw on the court was a piece of newspaper, and that's probably not as dangerous as some other projectiles they can hurl, but you don't want that kind of stuff coming out at all. Price on fire, his last eight. Has five points in this one, averaging 17-5 in the last eight ball games. Like the Duke was ahead seven and ahead comfortably for the autopilot of Maryland has changed the entire tone of this game in the last three, four minutes. And they've done it with what Gary Williams has always done it with, that's pressure. Simpkins. Duke stays in the zone with that small lineup. Maple, Wojciechowski, Collins, Price, and Newton. Rhodes had the shot, passed on it. Booth with a left hand, won't go, knocked out of bounds by Booth. Coming up at halftime on our Delta Fawcett Halftime Report, Chris Fowler and Digger Phelps standing by. You saw UMass in trouble, still playing in overtime. We'll have an update on the ACC and a look at Grant Hill against the Sonics. Crowd wanted a walk, they're not going to get it. But they do get a three-second call against Newton, and he can't believe it. Neither could Mike Krzyzewski. Newton went in there. He thought Wojciechowski was going to shoot the ball, so he went in to get rebounding position. Then Wojo didn't shoot it, but Wojo passed it, and then he thought Capel was going to shoot it, so he stayed there. You ought to go explain some of these things to Mike. He'd understand what's going on over there. <laughs> Simpkins drains a three. And the Terps are all the way back, Mike. Tied at 31, and pressure, pressure, pressure. What a crowd wants every call. Collins kicks it to Price. Missed the runner. Lucas with a rebound. Mike, and you take a runner off the pressure, and you miss it. That's the same as the turnover for these Turks. And this intensity of the crowd is something Maryland just feeds on. Oh, wow. You can't be serious. The top of the building would have come off if he makes that one. Rhodes can't hit the follow. Still a second to go. Wojo with a rebound. That's it. Maryland with a 10-2 run to end the half. And they tie Duke 31-31 here at home. It's time for the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. Let's check in with Chris and Digger. Mike, thank you. Maryland only in the beginning and the end of the half, Duke dominate in the middle part of it. Well, what happened at the end, I thought Duke maybe stayed in that zone a little too long. Maryland responded against the zone, got back in it with that 10 to 2 run. A lot coming up on our Delta Fawcett halftime report scores and highlights in the ACC, Marbury and Georgia Tech in an important game against Florida State. And we've got overtime games, double overtime games, a lot, including the story of UMass and St. Joe's coming up. ESPN's presentation of NCAA Basketball is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Miller Lite. When you've got the great taste of an ice-cold Miller Lite, life is good. Deadlock at 31. Scores and highlights coming right back. I expect we'll go to overtime, Chris. We always seem to. 31-31 here, Maryland against Duke. Mike Patrick, Dan Bonner, glad you could join us for the ACC tonight. And if you missed the first half, you missed one run after another. Johnny Rhodes really got the turf started early, scored the first seven points of the game, Mike. But then Duke settled down a little bit. They played in the half-court offense. And got back in the game. Now, Johnny Rhodes, one of the most versatile players you'll see. He can do it inside, particularly when he's matched up against another guard. Does a nice job getting position, but then against the zone, a dangerous three-point shooter if he's left all alone. Rhodes scored the first seven points of the game. Duke came back when they were able to make it a half-court game. Jeff Cable coming off the screen. Watch as he gets his feet set, and he gets the three-point basket off. Jeff Capel scored three threes in the first half. You can see the comparison. Rhodes only had two points in the half after scoring those first seven, and Capel with three three-point field goals finished with 11. Set to go in the second half. Capel hit three out of four three-point shots. Maryland must feel fortunate to be the 31-31 tie as X-3 hit. 
checked in in the first half with no points and no rebounds. Mike, Duke turned the ball over 10 times in the first half, but six of those turnovers came in the last four minutes as Maryland turned up the defensive intensity and got back in the game. On the other hand, Duke did a great job on the offensive boards. They've scored seven second-chance points. Maryland has yet to convert a second-chance point, so it seems to be a game of turnovers versus second-chance opportunities. Table misses out. Price kicks it to Collins. Right down the lane. Just does it again and again and again. Loves the scoop shot. Gary <laughs> Williams puts his hands out, palms up in the air, and saying to his players, all right, how does he keep that? Keep doing that. Let's stop that. Well, trying to go back to work inside. Akizi is fouled by Newton. That'll be two on Newton. Let's check the men in first half stats for you. And it's very interesting, Mike. Duke only shot 38%. They were only 50% from the three-point line. But you can see the key for or the free throw line. You can see the key is the rebounds. Duke with a big advantage in the rebounds, particularly the offensive rebounds, the second chance points. Maryland has been forced turnovers in the last four minutes, converted those into baskets, and got back in the game. And Duke had as many offensive rebounds as Maryland had defensive rebounds in the first half. That's not a good sign if you're in Maryland, and I'm sure Gary Williams pointed that out at halftime. Coaches has a way of, of indicating those guys. That probably caught his attention. Here's the Maryland pressure once again, and they get another steal. That's three hips, stepped in the passing lane to pick it off. Simpkins bumped by Price. First foul of the ballgame on Ricky Price and two quick fouls against Duke as a team here in the second half. Mike, you create those turnovers and suddenly for at least a few seconds it's a scramble game. And Maryland's very effective at that type of game. Hip has it down low. Just threw that one up and Domsowski with a rebound. Mike, just because you're close to the basket doesn't mean it's a good shot. I think he was looking for the foul. Here's Collins, fouled by Simpkins on the way in. And as we start the second half, Mike, the officials really getting after the physical play out of the guard spot. Non-shooting foul, so Duke inbound. Long lob to Price. Rhodes had one steal in the first half, so he's still three short of breaking Chris Fortiani's all-time record, but he created that one. Very quick hand. Plays the passing lane. Simpkins tries to dump it to Rhodes down the lane. That's a tough pass to give to somebody at point blank range. You can almost hear the point guard saying, bail me out. <laughs> Price with a great first step. Into the oh, how did that go in the basket? Let's see if it counts. It does. Mike, he got hit across the arm, and the ball basically flew out of his hands. He was in the shooting motion. But watch, the ball just flies out of his hands, and it's going to go in. Oh. Uh, I wonder if he practices that. The penetration to the basket. Rhodes coming down across the arm, and the ball literally just flew out of his hand. Yeah, okay, I meant that. I meant to do that. Price makes it a three-point play the old-fashioned way, and it's 36-33. I, I don't think that's the old-fashioned way, Mike. That's a great <laughs> creative way. The end of it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the new-fashioned way. Here's Domzowski, who just runs over a Keezy, and that's been the problem with Domzowski's foul trouble. Sometimes, like the proverbial bull in a china shop, he just whacks into something. Mike, if you're going to bump it by inside, you do it before he catches the ball because the officials aren't as likely to be looking at you. Newton with another rebound. Collins, another scoop. Mike, you know what happened that time? Johnny Rhodes and Akizi both tried to get the ball away from Newton. You're not going to take it from Newton. You get down the court and play defense, and because Maryland didn't get the defense set, Duke got an easy basket. Collins has eight for the game. Averaging 16 points a contest. Duke really likes the half-court game better in this particular situation, but they've done a great job taking advantage of the opportunities that have been made available, and that was made available because two guys went after the rebound, and there's no reason for this. Rose, hip, offensive rebound. X-ray hit for the first bucket of the game and draws the foul. 
Petri hip at six feet eight. That time just beat Ricky Price at six feet five to the basketball. Hip got himself in good position. Price not strong enough to push him out of there. And as a result, he uses that height advantage to come down with the ball. Gives the fake cape. Well, now, why would a guy stand under there, Mike? He's got his hands up in the air. And as hip goes by, he drops that one hand and hits him. If he just keeps his hands up in the air, he doesn't get that foul. That's his third tough pass to handle, but Capel does. Price likes that cut to the lane, but Simpkins cut him off there. Collins for three. Rims out on him. Newton keeps it alive. Lost it on the way up. Booth took it from the standing on the baseline. More scores coming in on a night where UMass barely escapes. Georgia beats Florida. That's a final. Mississippi over a crippled LSU team. And he keeps up to date on everything as we go along. Here's Collins. Nice save. Newton wants it low. Good reach in by Booth to knock it away. Three on two. Six gets the hit. Nice recognition by Simpkins to see the trailer. And now Hip makes a mistake swatting at the ball. If Capel catches that ball, Mike, Capel's got his back to the court facing the corner. It's going to be awfully hard for him to get out of there if a double team comes. Here's what you're talking about with Simpkins. Recognizing that X-ray Hip's behind him. Capel with the three fouls backs off. Easy basket. So X-ray goes scoreless for 22 minutes and then hits four in a row. Guy who understands his limitations. <laughs> yes. Wojo for three. There's the tip. Oh, Capel really got up. Newton has done most of the damage with five offensive rebounds tonight, but that time Capel gets the offensive put back. He's got 13 points, and Duke has two more second chance points. Rose in the lane. Got it in the foul. Boy, is everybody getting aggressive in this half? <laughs> Everybody going at the basket, Mike. You don't have a lot of guys spotting up behind the three-point line at the moment. That's Newton's second personal foul. Got him with three now, Dan. And as Maryland continues to attack, Duke, you mentioned, moves in along that bench, particularly on the front line. Domzalski's got three, Newton's got three. It's an important stretch for the Blue Devils. Well, this pressure has made it different. Wojciechowski gets it to Collins, and Collins will beat the 10-second count with plenty to spare. And that's an Brunson offensive foul. Offensive foul. Brunson picks up his third. He just lowered that shoulder. When you lower that shoulder and make contact your shoulder to the other guy's torso, it's almost always a charge. Now Brunson's got three personal yep. fouls. Duke does not play, has not played well in this game when they're going at a high rate of speed, and that's what the Maryland pressure sometimes forces you to do. Brunson, not the guy to handle it in that situation. Capel knocks it out of bounds. Not that that wasn't a good call, because it was. But I think you need a little more than that to knock down McKeezy. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe a bowling ball. <laughs> by one, they have the ball. Hey, Lucas is now in there. Hip kicks it back to Rhodes. Now to Simpkins for three. Without Newton, Newton with a rebound. Without Newton in the game, Duke could potentially have a tough time on the board. Mike Krzyzewski sits him down with a three personal. And with Don Zowski in the middle. There's so much time left in this team. Lojo had the rebound, hit him right in the forehead, but he finally kicks off a Maryland player. There's 16 minutes and seven seconds left in the game. Duke, with everybody almost has three personal fouls, so Mike Krzyzewski going to be really tested in terms of player management. Simpkins with a steal to hip, and then he's fouled by Wojciechowski. <laughs> That's one on Lojo, the sophomore from Severna Park, Maryland. And it is amazing, Mike, with four minutes left in the first half, Maryland just turned on this pressure, and it has been intense. The last four minutes of the first half, the first four minutes of the second. 
It hits the free throw, and it's like it used to be in here when Lefty was here. It is so hot in this building, and when you press and run this much, you'll find out who's in pretty good shape before it's over. Duke already over the limit. It's seven personal fouls. Maryland's committed only three here in the second half. It's hit both, hits both free throws. LeRon Profit will come back yet. Mike, and part of that is the fact that as Maryland gets steals, Duke can't get the defense set. Newton is back in there ahead of the pack. A lot of contact. And this is going to be the foul on Mario Lucas as Newton really went down hard. Lucas, Mike, would look like he was in position for the charge, but fell down. Now he started trying to draw the charge before Newton even got there. Newton looks like he's hurt. <laughs> went down very, very hard. Let's take another look. In effect, Lucas sort of fell underneath him, so Newton comes down right on top of him, but this, Mike shusevsky has got to be concerned with Newton with three fouls coming down on the break like this. Lucas gets in position, he falls down before Newton ever gets there, and Newton goes just down as hard as you can go on your side. Looks like he hit his hip. Hip or tailbone, either one of which would be extremely painful. Extremely painful, and sometimes you get a bruise in one of those spots, yeah. and it affects your mobility. And it doesn't go away no. easily either. And this is a point in the year where you can't have that guy. Yeah. Now, as Lucas gets in position, watch before there's any contact at all, he falls down, and then Newton just falls right over top of him, lands right on his oh. hip. And that's got to be painful. It looked like Lucas got his own feet tangled. Boy, Newton is still down. Well, that's a guy who's down there trying to take the charge, but who just shies away from the contact that's going to be required with 235-pound Newton coming barreling down at you. You figure you'll get a start on it and you'll fall down before he hits you. Well, you brought up the point earlier. Duke is such a thin team with the injuries they have had before that they could ill afford to lose any starter, particularly Newton, who has been so solid inside. And he's up and able at least limp to the Duke bench. That's the kind of a thing, Mike, that he'll sit over there and with his adrenaline pumping in this game, he may be able to come back in this game. But the, the problem that you have is, is he going to be ready for the next game? Although the expression on his face now, he might not be able to come back in this one. You know, once that thing gets some swelling in there, it gets sore. And manipulating his leg there, he's probably get some movement in that joint. So Price, who's a 71% free throw shooter, will shoot the free throws for Newton. You have the option of designating someone in event of an injury. And Duke basically has the munchkin <laughs> Fifteen fifty-nine to go in the ball game. Maryland hanging on to a lead at home. Back at College Park with fifteen fifty-nine to go in the game. Maryland forty-three, Duke forty-two. The rest of the ACC action tonight: Clemson by four over NC State. Has anyone ever lost more close games than the Wolfpack? Buckner with a career-high thirty. Georgia Tech continues its roll toward postseason by fifteen at Florida State. All-conference: Matt Harper twenty-two points, eight rebounds. And that makes the standings look like this. Georgia Tech will clinch at least a tie for first at 12 and 3. Wake Forest a game behind in the loss column. Duke at 7 and 7. Maryland at 6 and 7. Critical game for both, maybe more so for the Terps with a 14 and 10 overall record. Mike, the interesting thing about those standings, what if Clemson upsets Georgia Tech and finishes 8-8 eight eight in the league? They've got no quality wins outside the league. Lucas misses that one, but again, that's another tough decision for the committee. How do you not take a team that goes 18 and 8 during the regular season? And that's what Clemson would be if they won the game on Sunday at Georgia Tech. Of course, one of the barriers says Clemson. That was the first game on the road all year at NC State. X-ray hit, nice pass to Booth. Mike, in the first 16 minutes of this game, Duke committed four turnovers. Here comes Newton back in the ballgame. Well, as I say, he may not really feel the effect of that for until tomorrow morning. In the last nine minutes, Duke has committed 11 turnovers. And Maryland's outscored him 24 to 13 in that time. 
This Domzowski trying to pull his way into the lane came out on him halfway down. That's the kind of a game Duke needs to create, though. Try to make it a little bit more on the half court level. Lucas loves that outside shot. Booth with a rebound. Simpkins for three. Booth again keeps it alive and scrambles after it. Duke had a tough time handling the ball. That one actually bounced right off Newton's hand. Booth with nine rebounds tonight. Four offensive. That is a two. A foot on the line for Profit. Profit now throws to five. Bad pass. Price somehow got back to it. Well, Lucas didn't really jump for the ball. He sort of hit Ricky Price. The problem for Duke is not only are they turning the ball over, Maryland's now getting the offensive rebound. It's a bad combination for the Blue Devils. Couldn't handle a tough bounce pass. Here comes Simpkins. They want the lob. They get it to Booth. And for Booth, that's got to feel like justice after all the work on the board to get the slam that way. Maryland on a 16-4 run. And now lead by seven. Timeout on the court, 14.04 to go in the game, back to Cole in a moment. 7 to 2, the Terps up by 7. And you want to know why they're on a 16 to 4 run? Well, turnover's the story of the game. Duke only turning it over four times in the first 16 minutes, but in the last 10, corresponding with that 16 to 4 run, the Blue Devils not handling the ball very well. Nearly had another one, 10 seconds. They did not beat the 10-second count. Not that it's going to matter now. They threw the ball out of bounds. But the clock had gone to 24 before they got it across midcourt and no whistle. Usually you get that extra second. Mike Krzyzewski wanting to know why there wasn't a personal foul call. Either that or he's got a bug on his arm. 50-50, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Boom. There's another offensive rebound, Mike. Maryland just dominating the boards in the second half. Now we get the turn on uh, that personal foul. Excuse me. Booth reached in and slapped out of that two on him. Maryland has been very aggressive on the defensive end. Booth has been aggressive on the offensive end. Just doesn't get it to go the first time. But look how quickly he gets back up and how high he gets up to tip it in. Booth now 10 rebounds in the game, five on the offensive glass. Booth is just a guy who keeps working and working and working. Price. Oh, that was sweet. And that was a basket that Duke desperately needed. Price now has a dozen. You see Maryland playing with a lot of confidence at the moment. Of course, they did that game in the first half. They had that 11 to 2 run. They looked like world beaters. And then they started doing things like that. <laughs> Gary Williams <laughs> is down in his catcher's crouch, and he is really making a point to his players. Rhodes checks back into the ball game, two steals away from setting an all-time ACC record. Capel. That's one of those plays where Capel made up his mind he was going to shoot it before he started in. Collins with a runner. Duke with the second chance opportunity. The first shot by Cable was a bad one. Mike Collins was actually headed toward the basket. Was Even though it was that runner, it's the one that he shoots and he makes with great consistency. Well, you talked about him in the first half about making bad decisions sometimes. And if you're 25 feet away from the basket, you make up your mind you're going to drive and shoot. It might be a bad one. Profit for three. The lead grows back to eight. And a foul in the backcourt. The Maryland fans wanted another steal. Nearly got it. Mike Profit, I think, is going to be a great player in this league before it's all said and done. He hasn't gotten a lot of minutes this year for Maryland, but I'm telling you, he looks to me like he's to all the skill. Got four fouls at the moment, unfortunately. Profit and Stokes both, I think, are going to be pretty solid ball players. 
And Akizi, with as much as Akizi has improved this year, if he, and of course there's no guarantee that he'll continue to make uh, similar improvements in subsequent years, but if he does, he'll be very effective inside. Here's Collins. Once he gets in the lane, the ball's in the hole. You can put it in the book. You don't even have to watch for it. Maryland One of the fans it. just called out behind us, hey, stop it. That's a pretty good idea. Yes, it is. And I think that's what Gary Williams is telling his players during this 20-second timeout. But they haven't done it as Collins has a dozen, most on that variety. Loves to go end-to-end. -end. But he pushes under control, Mike. It's, it's, you know, he's not out of control when he gets in there. He's moving toward the basket, but it's a nice on-balance kind of thing. There's not any hurry up in that kind of a game. He pushes the ball up, but he's under control. The other thing Collins has been able to do this year is take a lot of the point guard duties away from Capel, who labored under that double assignment last year. So when Wojciechowski isn't in there, they have a very good point guard in Collins, whose assist to turnover ratio is 2-1. to one. Maryland goes back to work trying it inside. Both can't get in there. Now Rogue, triple team and foul. Let's see who gets it. And forgot Price. That'll be two on Ricky Price. The fouls continue to add up. We we're talking about Collins, and <laughs> it's a good thing he's out there for the Blue Devils. And he is capable of carrying this team with his three-point range. Drive Rhodes misses the free throw. Mike, it's a kind of terrible season Collins had last year. It's, you know, it really says something about his character, that doesn't he it? Can keep his head up and just come back and, and work hard and have the kind of a season that he's had this year. A lot of guys who wouldn't come back. Collins for three. Newton offensive rebound and then he pounds it inside and draws the foul. One of the keys to the Duke offense, when they've been able to get it in the half-court set, is the ability to run the opponents off screens, move without the basketball. This is the senior Collins running the freshman around, but Stokes actually makes a good recovery. That's not an uncontested shot. Collins misses it. Newton, sore hip and all, gets the rebound. Another one. Six offensive rebounds for Greg Newton. Nine rebounds total, nine points. And Mike, if I'm Gary Williams, I've got to be a little concerned at this point because I just feel the game going away from the intense full-court kind of game where Maryland had some success the last couple of possessions. Duke's been able to work it in the half court pretty well. Newton got his own miss back. Collins finally misses one in the lane. Then goes after a Keezy and commits a silly foul. It's that time of the year on ESPN and ESPN2. It's championship week starting this Saturday. See 65 games, 29 championships will all be bleary-eyed. The entire ACC and Big East tournament. And then you'll see the men's and women's selection specials. It's like it's the old favorite time of the year. Bleary-eyed though, Mike, but it's like the old Maxwell smart line. And the loving it. <laughs> Absolutely. that one through. He has six points tonight. He's only a 53% free throw shooter, but looks better than that, doesn't it? Absolutely. That ball slipped in there nicely. Four out of five tonight. Of course, all you have to do is compliment a free throw shooter. You know where the next one goes. <laughs> Into the hands of the blue shirt of Greg Newton. 55-48 as we approach the 11-minute mark. Stokes is really hawking the combo. Bryce can't get around hip, though. Reset to 11 on the shot clock. Stokes is doing a great job staying with Chris Collins. Bryce tries to go baseline. Excellent defensive series for Merrill. And one of the keys to that was the fact that Collins couldn't handle the ball in scoring position. Collins goes for a steal. Rhodes couldn't get it to fall. Newton! Really throwing the elbows underneath. Oh, that could have gotten ugly. Newton now with 12 boards. I don't understand why they attack Newton when he gets the basketball. Wojo for three. Boy, that's a shot. Big basket. 55-51. Half court though, Mike. Half court kind of a game. 
not the pressing transition game that got the Turks the lead. It's amazing how the game has fluctuated back and forth in that man. It's been incredible. Oh, Great oh. feet inside. Booth had it blocked by Newt. Then the foul on Domzowski. That's actually against Rojo. Booth again at six feet five or so in there is going to try to power it up to the basket. That's just a great play by Noose. Booth actually a little too far from the basket, a little closer. He can get the two-handed slam attempt, and those would be very hard to block without committing the foul. Mike, we talked about the last game when Duke shot 47 free throws to Maryland's 25 in this game. The Terrapins outscoring Duke from the free throw line, but that's because Maryland's been attacking inside. Keezy back to the line. Maryland by four. 10.07 left in this game. Keezy missed them both. Wojo comes out with a loose ball. Wojciechowski's done a much better job of handling the ball this year. Collins around the screen for three. Well, you know you've got touch when you get a bounce on a three-point 22-footer. He had a bounce like that at the end of the North Carolina State yes. game in Raleigh to win the game. Booth straight down the lane, offensive foul on Booth. That's four on him, and a great defensive play by the Blue Devils, who have done it for years. Mike, they've got the game more of a half-court kind of game. Collins coming off the screen, getting his feet set, knocking down the jump shot, and now Booth trying to take it all the way to the basket. You know, if you get by out there, stop and shoot the 12-foot jump shot because you know if you go all the way to the basket, somebody's going to be coming trying to draw the charge. Achizi and Booth will both get a rest. Well, Newton has been back in there playing with three personal fouls and a bad hip, and it doesn't look like anything is affected. Now he'll get a little bit of a breather. Domzowski and Brunson up front for Mike Suchetsky. Paper, tough pull-up jump shot. Here comes Simpson. Waits for help. Rhodes, got it. Johnny Rose has 14 points, approaching his 17-point average. And Maryland goes back to the triangle and two. They're guarding Collins and Cable man-to-man. -man. Everybody else playing zone. Collins will try to get down the lane, and they're going to call Simpson or Dwayne Simpson for grabbing him as he started down the lane. That's two on Dwayne Simpson. Simpkins has the assignment against Collins in the man-to-man -man part of that triangle and two zone. Brunson gives him just enough screen to get open, and then Collins with the hand check against Simpkins. Check it. That's going to be four on Simpkins. We had him for two. You look at the scoreboard. They had him for three. That was his fourth. And Collins, an excellent free throw shooter, hits the first one. Collins has really come on in the second half. He has led this ball club. One out of three from three-point range, 12 into 16. Coming in the last 11 minutes. Misses the second free throw, hit for the rebound. Mike, when Maryland has not been able to create turnovers, their offense is sputtered, and when their offense sputters, they can't set the press, which creates the turnover. They have struggled all year to make up for the loss of Joe Smith, and they have to do that playing 94 feet. Rhodes to hit. This is for three. Rhodes kept it alive. Rhodes in among the trees gets the follow. People talk about Johnny Rhodes' ability to steal the basketball, but he's always been an excellent offensive rebounder. 59-55. Maryland Rhodes with 16. Mike, and with some of the foul trouble Maryland has had, they've had to back off on the pressure. That time, even though they scored, they didn't set the pressure defense, so the fouls causing some problems with Jerry Williams' strategy as well. Wojciechowski gets it to Newton, trying to back in against the double team. He missed. Collins got a hand on it, but the rebound to Rose. Stokes pushes. Tries the three. Collins, another pretty good rebound in guard. Excellent defense by the Turks last time against Newton. Didn't let him go to the basket. Wojo 
Bojo with Rhodes on him. Tough for Rhodes. Bojo to do anything against Rhodes. Domzowski, beautiful move against Luke. Kamen Domzowski has really come on this year. His first two tonight, however. Lucas. Trying to return the favor. Yeah, that's right. the other point. <laughs> 16 feet too close. Duke with a chance to tie or take the lead. Bojo had the shot in the Well, he didn't really have his feet set, Mike. That was a good decision, not the launch. away from the ball. They're going to call Newton for pushing off. That'll be four on Greg Newton. Mike and Jesse Sands. Boy, Newton's really got banged up tonight. Uh, scratched on the face, hurt his hip. He certainly has the Warriors look about it. Yes, he does. All he needs is his shield. <laughs> At the moment, he going to take a seat on the bench because he's got those four fouls and there's still 652 left in the game. Hip at the line, virtually all of his numbers down last year, although this February, the entire month, he's played very, very well, scoring about 20% above his season's average. Oh, Missed the second one. Not going to bounce out to do. Got a timeout with 6.50 to go in the ballgame. Maryland 60, Duke 57. It's for all that action. The ACC tournament certainly won't be like it was last year when four heavyweights just went to war. It's going to be wide open. Collins kicks it ahead to Price. Duke down by three with 6.41 left to go from Cole. Mike, there's no heavyweights in the ACC, but there's a pretty good well below. Yeah. Maybe light heavies, too. So, great looking fresh from point guard. Lucas, that's the ring. There you go. That's the way he needs. 16 feet further out. The lead grows to six. Boy, Stokes did a great job of pushing the ball up the court, drawing the defense to him, and creating that open. Collins down the lane, got the bucket and the foul. And that, Boy, he's just become such a clutch player. And that's really the first time he's been able to get past Stokes out on the perimeter. This is just the senior taking the freshman down the lane. Protects the ball with his body. Watch as Collins goes down the lane here, how he protects the basketball with his body, forcing Stokes to come over, come, try to come through him to get the ball. Three-point play for Collins in the lead. Cut back to three. Newton back in the game with those four personal fouls. It's that time as we approach six minutes, he and Domzowski in there together. Elliott gets the ball down low, powers it up. Nice move. And that's... Rhodes makes a nice pass, but that's a good decision by Elliott to try to get the ball up, knowing that Newton cannot go after him to block the shot. First two for Elliott. Collins down the lane again. Get him a patent on that. Collins, 21 points, 17 coming in the second half. Stokes, one, explodes, and then missed the shot. Everything but the finish. Collins back the other way. Down the lane, stolen, but a foul. That's on Stokes, it's his third. The Duke Blue Devils in some foul trouble inside. And Johnny Rhodes recognizing that a perfect pass to Elliott. And while he shoots the ball back over his head, it's a nice job to get it up, hoping to get the foul call against either Newton, who's got four, or Domzalski with three. We're in the double bonus the rest of the way. Collins trying to get back to back three point plays. Collins has had an amazing second half. He's Wait a minute, they're not going to count the uh, bucket. That must be it. No, no, they didn't count the basket. Collins keeps two. Misses the second, so the lead is two. Domzowski with a follow, and we're tied. Well, it was a three-point play, just a little differently than you expected, Mike. 
reverse order. <laughs> Quite a game. Everybody's going to need a shot of adrenaline before this one's over. Pip nearly lost it down the lane. Lucas for three. He's had to give it to his foot was on the line. 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 It's amazing how well he shoots the ball from the perimeter. The problem for Maryland is Newton's matched up against him in size. He can't pound it into Lucas and draw the foul from Newton. 6 8 2 30 with a lot of range. Capel with a hanger in the lane. Tied again at 67. We could play well into the night at this rate. Just another game in the ACC. Rose, oh, what a move on K4. Are you kidding? And Newton got his fifth foul. What a move on the baseline. That, be, that may be the key play of the game. Newton comes over, and, you know, if you're Newton, you just got to get out of the way. Capel jumps up in the air, Mike, and you can't do that when Johnny Rhodes has his dribble right at the end of the play. Newton jumped, or Capel jumps up in the air, and that lets Rhodes get by, and Newton with 11 points, 14 rebounds, is going to have to sit down. There's Johnny's mom, Lucy, really enjoying seeing the uh, winding down of her son's senior career. Well, she knew that Johnny still had his dribble. Jeff Cable <laughs> forgot, though. Boy, what a sweet-looking move. Have to go back and check for uniform parts after that one. Blue Devils want a timeout with 4.18 to go. We've got a timeout on the floor. Terps by two. Don't go away. Been this way the entire game. Maryland by two with 4.18 left. You joined us late. Duke with a huge advantage on the boards. And Chris Collins with 18. It was 22 in the second half. Maryland, big advantage in points off of turnovers. And Johnny Rhodes has had an outstanding game. Total of 18 points. However, Duke has lost Greg Newton on fouls with 4.18 to go. Rhodes missed the free throw, and Domzowski, the only big man left for Mike Krzyzewski, gets Dom the rebound. Domzowski's got three personal fouls. Now Duke's going to try to spread it a little bit. Collins against Hip, and actually Hip will pick up his third person. That's a tough matchup for Hip. Hip at six feet eight, has pretty quick feet, and where Hip got himself into trouble, Mike, is he's reaching in at Collins. That far from the basket, Hip's just got to move his feet, try to stay between Collins and the basket. If he starts reaching out there, the officials have been calling that pretty closely in the entire second half. Hip's just not going to get away with that. Hip will sit down. 4.06 left. Collins goes to the line. Three out of five free throws now. Three out of six. The 70% shooter. And with Hip out of the game, Gary Williams puts Terrell Stokes back in. So now three guards for Gary Williams to match Mike Krzyzewski's free throw. Collins hits another free throw. One thing to keep an eye on in free throw shooting at the end of, game, end of game, players get tired, especially in this kind of an environment with this kind of pace. It's just that much tougher to shoot. Rose kicks it to Lucas. Short, Cable with a rebound. And see, Lucas is a perimeter player. Despite his size, he's a perimeter player. And so Cable can, Cable, Cable can match up against him. And Collins is going to draw another foul. Stokes really upset at the call. That's going to be four on Terrell Stokes, and Gary Williams is right with him. Collins really been doing the job for Duke on offense. You know, Dan, besides just the sheer numbers, he has made the buckets when it looks like the team might be in trouble. He takes it on himself. Mike, he has literally carried them in the second half. They were in deep trouble, and Collins got the ball to go in the basket, and he has led Duke back to the lead. Amazing. Collins now with 25 points. And Duke up by one with 3.39 left. Let's see if Gary Williams tries to get Lucas down inside, see if he can post up against Capel. Hey! 
Gonzalski fouls against Booth. That'll be four on Taman Gonzalski. Booth is so strong and so aggressive inside that it's going to be difficult for Gonzalski to try to keep him away from the basketball without fouling. Fouling. There's going to be some bumping in there, and Gonzalski doesn't have any more margin for error. Here's the foul situation. Nearly the entire roster. We've lost only one player so far. That's Newton. But four players from Maryland who have had significant minutes tonight are in foul trouble. Yeah, Booth hits the free throw. As we said before, if Gumzalski fouls out of the game, it's going to be like the house dropping into Munchkin land. They're going to have to put little guys in. Tied at 70. A double-double for Booth tonight. 14 points. Maryland regains the lead, and here comes pressure. But that foul trouble, they can't stay with it very long. Just token, and they have to back it off, Mike. This is Price. Capel just able to save it. Capel launches. Oh, you can't be serious. Why did he shoot that ball, Mike? 30 footer. The shot clock wasn't running down, was it? No, it wasn't that close. Those are the kind of things that get you in trouble, not only during a game, but especially at the end of the game. Booth, nice head fake. Lost it on the way up. Who are they going to get? Wojciechowski, and that's a good call. Wojciechowski did reach in and slap at the ball. In this particular situation, Duke needs to get help to Domzowski a little faster than that. When Booth dribbles the basketball, that's when Wojciechowski has to go after it. Once Booth starts to the basket, Wojo reaches in as he did that time. He's going to get the foul. Booth, four out of four tonight on the season, almost 77%. That's in the ACC's top ten. Mike, with Newton out of the basketball game, the advantage in the half court, particularly in the inside game, really switches over to Maryland. Now Booth can operate down inside against the freshman Gonzalski, who also has four fouls. Booth is going to be very, very difficult to contain. Turns by three. Booth, six out of six from the line. Really worked hard to improve himself as a free throw shooter. Up more than 10% from last year. He's a matchup that Duke is going to have a very, very hard time handling. Collins trying to get around the double team. Lucas with the double team. Nobody was guarding Gonzalski. Capel down the lane. Tough shot and got it. Capel now with 17. And is with, as, with, with as much attention, I'll get it out, with as much attention as Collins is receiving, it appears that if Duke is going to win this basketball game, they're going to need some big plays from Capel. Simpkins against Wojciechowski. Booth nearly lost it, got it to Lucas. Too strong as he tried to reverse. Mike, he's got a power against Gomzalski. Gomzalski's got four fouls. He's got no choice but to get out of the way. Back to your point, he's a perimeter player. Collins, tough shot. He'll draw the foul on X3 hip, or is it Lucas? It's going to be Lucas. Picks up his third. Now, Mario Lucas picks up the foul on the defensive end, but on the other end of the court, he gets the ball on an excellent pass. Booth finds him. He's all alone. Now, Domzalski comes over. Domzalski has no choice but to get out of the way, but Lucas goes underneath the basket. That would have been a nice horse shot if it has gone in the basket, but what Gary Williams was looking for was a dunk and possibly the fifth foul on Domzalski. And I think that's what Gary Williams may say right now as he takes Lucas out of the ballgame and puts Akizi back in. Well, Akizi is going to get down inside and is going to play inside. So Gary Williams with the foul trouble on the Duke front line now has two inside guys, Booth and Akizi in the game. Collins, 8 out of 11 from the line. Duke regains the lead with a minute 47 to go. 23 points for Collins in the second half. Booth wants it low against Domzowski. They double down on him. Now Capel has to back off. Booth, nice drop step, but he missed the shot. 
Gonzalski did a nice job not fouling on that particular play, and the Duke, the Duke defense did a nice job forcing Bruce to hurry more than I think he was interested in hurrying. We haven't said that very much this year, have we? Did a nice job of not fouling, <laughs> and you're right, and he's improved in the last couple of weeks. 105 and counting. Collins launches the three. Tough shot. They didn't really have a speed set. Simpkins back the other way. Got it to Booth. Booth fouled by Capel. Four on Capel. Sports Center coming up after the ball game. Chris Berman and Dan Patrick. Must be uh, old home week. <laughs> Shaq hosts the Heat. Another UMass thriller as they go to overtime. More on Gretzky. Chris has that, uh, I've been to Maui tan on. <laughs> Must have taken a chopper back to uh, entertain us on Sports Center. We'll look forward to that. Goes at the line, trying to reach in the lead for the turf short on the first one. Of course, every, first miss tonight in seven tries. Everything two shots now. Been that way for a long time. <laughs> well, we've got a lot of guys on the bench in foul trouble. If we go to overtime, we're going to run out of players. Gary and Michael have to play. They probably enjoy that. Who takes the second one? We're tied at 74. Maryland calls for timeout. They want to talk about the strategy down the stretch. 54 seconds left from Cole Fieldhouse. We're all knotted up. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by the new Dodge. We're thinking ahead. Four ticks of the clock left from Cole Fieldhouse. Duke and Maryland tied at 74. We've been in the double bonus for a long time. The timeout situation. Duke with 121 full. Maryland has two full. The critical possession arrow is in Maryland's favor. Mike, in this situation, I think that there's 54 seconds left in the game. If Duke can get the ball down the court and get a good shot, not, a, not any shot, but a good shot quickly, then they they can actually get two for one in this situation. But I agree with that. That looks like that's hard. what they're going to do. Maryland with some pressure. Low jump. Now they're going to work all the time off the clock. Now Maryland does not want to foul. Domzowski with a left hand missed. Akizi got a hand on it, then lost it. It's out to Duke, and now the shot clock is off. Now Duke can hold it for the last shot. The key to that whole setting was the fact that Domzowski's shot hit the rim. The shot clock reset. Now Collins wants his timeout as he was having trouble getting the ball inbounds. Mike Krzyzewski signaling for the 20-second timeout. Gary Williams has to be pretty frustrated. One of the things that his team has not done well tonight is rebound the basketball on the defensive end. That time, they just couldn't get their hands on the ball, and as a result, that nobody, no individual player from Duke was credited with that rebound, but the team still gets it, and now Duke has the opportunity to hold it for the last shot. Yeah, and let's take a look at the standings. Georgia Tech winning tonight a game up on Wake Forest in the loss column, clinching at least a tie for regular season number one. North Carolina, Tarheels just coming apart. Nine and six down the conference, falling to third. Duke, as you see, at seven and seven. Maryland one game under 500. Mike, it's important that Duke handled the ball well. Maryland is going to try to pressure. And Maryland needs to block out. Last year's game at Duke was decided on an offensive rebound by Joe Smith as time expired. And in this situation, again, I'll say it, Mike, it's not always the shot that wins the game. It's that offensive rebound. Shot clock is off. Do you go to Collins? Do you go to Capel? It's Collins. Air ball. Maryland has it. Calls timeout. No, I think there was a foul, foul call. on Capel. Capel's gone. Hey. 
Mike, the, the interesting thing about that play is Collins did not really have a good look at the no. basket. He didn't get his feet set. He was fading back, but he shot that ball with about 16 seconds left in the game. And the shot clock was off. He didn't have to shoot that one. Came off that screen, going for the three. Now, Capel's going to come in here and try to tie up the basketball, and he gets the officials not going to let you come from behind and tie no. up the ball like that. And really, why does Capel make that play? There's nine and a half seconds to go. The game is tied at 74. Not going to be easy for Maryland to get down and get a good shot in that length of time. Now they'll have two free throws, and Capel will join Newton as having fouled out of the ball game. But even if you hit the two free throws, the game is not over, not with a three-point no, shot. It's, there's nine and a half seconds left. Duke still has a full timeout. hit eight out of nine and down the stretch Maryland has gone almost exclusively to Keith Booth and he has produced good order on the second one Donzowski to Collins game on the line Collins had it knocked away Booth he stepped on the out of bounds line before he called the timeout he called the timeout in midair. Yes, but he stepped on the line before he got to right. midair. And there's 3.6 seconds left. Holy cow. And this is what Gary Williams is going to argue. And Larry Rose is telling him, hey, he called the timeout, but only after he stepped on the line. Collins very nearly loses this ball. The ball is going to the corner. Now Booth is going to get it right there. He steps on the line, and now he calls the timeout. That's an excellent call by the official. Boy, good job by Larry Rose. I mean, there, there has been so much intensity in this game, and it's been an extremely well-officiated ball game as usual. Now 3.6 seconds left and a one-point lead. What do you like here? <laughs> well, I think if I'm Maryland, I've got to be real concerned about Collins. Now, the other thing that if I was Maryland, I, I would try to make sure that I did not let, get Pr let Price get the ball to the basket. I don't think that in this situation I'm going to be particularly worried about Price shooting the three. I'm not going to give him a wide open one, but my concern would be Collins from three-point range, Price getting the ball, faking from three-point range, and driving to the basket and again you've got to block out and get the ball there's still enough time if Duke shoots it quickly for the Blue Devils to get an offensive rebound and tip it in the basket I don't think there's enough time for somebody to grab the ball get right. themselves set and power it back up but a tip could still decide this game of course Duke is minus a couple of weapons because Newton and Capel have both already fouled out of the ball game and Duke is also minus any timeout so what Duke what Duke has to do in this situation like that first thing and this sounds silly but the first thing you gotta do is get the ball in bounds that's true <laughs> it's always fun here. It's always fun in the ACC. 75-74, Maryland by one. Duke basketball, 3.6 seconds to go. Brunson, Bryce, Collins, Dombzowski, and Wojciechowski. And Hip is going to match up against Collins to try to get that 6-8 frame. Brunson inbounds. Wojo, tough matchup here. Bryce! To win. He got it. He's good. Holy cow, what a shot at the buzzer. Ricky Price finishes the game with 15 points. That's the way Duke has been playing. Somebody has hit the huge shots for the Blue Devils and heartbreaking for Gary Williams. To see his team come this close in such a big game, have the advantage, and lose it at the buzzer. Mike, this shows you how much I know about basketball. <laughs> I said that I would be more concerned about Price getting to the basket than Price shooting the open three. Price just won the ball game with an open three. I thought the key to that whole situation, however, was Steve Wojciechowski's ability to handle the inbounds pass and not panic. 
the inbounds pass actually was going over his head and this is a situation where a young man could panic but Wojciechowski catches the ball he understands how much time is left on the clock and he gets it to Price who's all alone over there and Ricky Price who missed the shot that could have won the North Carolina game knocks the ball in the basket here's Wojciechowski at the end doing a great job they leave Price you can see hip or that's Johnny Rhodes belatedly trying to get over there the tough inbounds pass actually put Maryland out of position and the Duke bench Mike Shisesi with a big smile and this does so much for a team's confidence and a player's confidence when they can hit that shot and it's just crushing doesn't for do Gary much Williams. for Gary Williams so Maryland is going to fall to 14 and 11 6 and 8 in the ACC the Blue Devils however will go to 18 and 10 8 and 7 if there was any doubt that they should get a tournament bid before this I think they're in now for Dan Bonner and our entire ESPN crew it's been a lot of fun for Maryland thanks for watching everybody 